Right, well this is harvesting the hedgerows and we haven't even got out of the estate yet but uh, our first harvest is on the carts and I'll switch camera and show you what that is So there we go uh, I wouldn't say the Victoria plums but they're not that far off but they are a bit high up so I might act actually have to come back with some ladders short step ladders to get up there and harvest a lot of them but you can see them up there hopefully so that's our first harvest and just beyond the plum tree is consideration for a little bit later on because I don't usually collect the dog rose or the little rose hips I usually go for the larger ones so there's two supplies already and just beyond the rose hips come on good dog we've got another source of food not a one I rate terribly highly but this is the hawthorn and the reason I don't rate it terribly highly is because these are the haw berries, hawthorns berries and you can eat those just spit a plum pip out but the trouble with them is most of it is taken up with seed so although you can eat them You can see there there's quite a big seed in them so you don't actually get a lot of flesh off but they are quite edible and you can make a sort of paste with them that will last so that's a consideration but not something we're after at the moment we're just going to walk along about another 200 metres or so and then we're going to get off the road. We are on the road at the moment. You can see behind me, not a lot of traffic through the village at the moment because there's roadworks further up the road that are actually st stopping traffic going all the way through. So in a way that's quite good. So a little bit off the road not too far from the plums and the hawthorn we've got brambles but uh, these brambles are probably past the best now because as you can see a lot of them have started dying off and that's mainly because they're starting to go rotten with all this rotten weather we've had but uh, I collect a lot of brambles at this time of year that's brambles I think you Americans call them blackberries, probably. Thorny stems, look. Very useful, them stems, for making cordage out of. Jack the wasps. Yellow jackets. There's a yellow jacket at work there. So I'm going to get a few of these. And... How I gather these is just in these containers which I put holes in and sometimes I dangle these round my neck so I've got two hands free which is helpful especially when you've got a dog to contain as well. You can see at the back of me there building works going on so we might not have this this area too long but we've got plenty of other areas so I'll get on and pick some of these brambles unfortunately the builders don't have the same priorities as me and they've uh, fenced a lot of the good brambling area off down there but uh, there's a few here we can get
then just a little bit up from the brambles what we've got is the big raw sips uh, these ones here not the dog rows but the other one and uh, you've got to pick these when they're orange not red otherwise you have a hard job getting all the seeds out but this is my one of my main vitamin C sources through the winter these with a the pudding on a night so I put these in a different container brambles are seedy but uh, these take a lot of processing so I like to eat these but I don't like to process them because it's fiddly especially these a lot of these now are starting to get too ripe you don't want them when they're green but you you don't want them red like that although the dog will eat them red like that and I'll eat them red like that straight off the bush here just The birds will eat them like that. There's little parasites in these, little uh, worms, there'll be a worm in that one. You can tell whether there's a worm active inside by the state of it. But uh, it won't do you much harm. It won't do you any harm at all. All the seeds inside. Uh, you see the, the worms make a right mess of the inside. Get worm poo and to eat the thing. So, if they're solid, they're usually all right. It's funny, well, it's always a funny year in the UK with weather wise, but I think the weather's been very kind to us this year. It wasn't very kind last year. That's how you want them, really, like that. And then they're easy to de seed. I used to go around the back of these as well, but I've put the fence up too close. All the thistles and nettles have grown up, so it's just not worth hacking it, hacking it all down for the small amount of space I'll have left behind there. Come on. Mixed in with the, these rose hips, so these, um, oh, what do they call them now? <laughs> Mount Nash, uh, Rowan. Rowan berries, but as they are, you would think they were toxic, and uh, I think uh, raw they are toxic. I think they've got too much oxalic acid in them. Um, but if you cook them down, that does away with the oxalic acid, and you can make a sauce with them. But uh, I won't be doing that this year. Stick to what we know this year. Now we've almost missed it out, but. Uh, just along from the Rowan and the, well, we're, we're still in among some of the um, rose hip. We've got up here a well disguised, and they're past the best now. And somebody else has harvested a few, and I've harvested a few, so there's not many left. But you can just see up there, they're like plums but green and the green gauges so they're ripe when they're green we've got all the low ones in fact that's pretty much over ripe but quality control is if it's no good eat it if it's not worth keeping eat it Where's the dog gone? You can see all on the floor all the ones that have fallen off. And you can see the wasps are on them. Getting the sugars out. That's always a giveaway 
when you're looking for stuff is uh, is what's on the floor. Anyway, I'll press on. Now that'll be the next big harvest of this year is the apples. Dogs pulling on me, uh, but not necessarily from this tree because we're a bit close to the road. But uh, I'll be concentrating on apples once I've finished. Once I think I've got enough brambles and rose hips. Uh, a lot more trees around further from the road but today and this is another hawthorn here but today I'm just um, I've had the dog out this morning and uh, it's soaking wet so I've washed her once I'm just taking her around cleaner areas this afternoon just so as uh, we don't have to go through the washing process again or at least not as much anyway so Apples, that's next on the list. There's always the added bonus when you're out and about. Uh, there's a house just there and I've got a lorry unloading building materials which is causing a bit of a racket. But there's nothing we can do about that. Anyway, I'm getting a few more brambles here. There's always the added bonus, look. See what's stashed down in the undergrowth. Can't get it out, it's wrapped round the brambles, I think. But uh, I think the brambles have grown through it. Yes, they have, I'm going to have to cut it. But there's a bicycle inner tube there, look. So that'll make good fire tinder and um, ranger bands so it's it's through a fairly substantial piece of bramble there and another one down there so must have been there for a while so it just goes to show that uh, this sort of elastic lasts got no gloves with me see I, I often leave the house without anything with me without anything I don't worry about it uh, I'm only less than a half an hour from home I can always come back and get it later there we go right we've got it so range of bands Fire lighting material. Another bonus. Hey, don't you be carrying it off. We're not playing tug of war with that. Someone will let go. Let her play with it for a bit while I get some more brambles. Now I'm walking up this hill here backwards because otherwise I'd be dark silhouetted against a light background because the sun is in the direction I am facing so that's why I'm walking backwards up this hill but anyway this is just a what I am foraging while I'm out with the dog it's not extensive it's not what you can eat you can eat lots of things all this gorse around me You'd be hard pushed to live off it, but you can eat the flowers off the gorse. There's uh, thistles. You can take the insides out of the thistles. It's a bit stringy, but you can eat that. We passed burdock, but it's close to that vehicle that's unloading building materials. So it's making a racket, so I give up on that. So, this is just what I harvest when I'm out with the dog, just a little at a time. So I'm only bringing back about a litre in volume, if it was water, in a litre bottle, litre bottles. So these, these are my litre bottles in here. So I've got four with me, but I won't fill four up, but I put four in to stop, stop them from rattling about and falling over. So I might fill two up. 
one with raw sips, one with brambles, and I might get something else on the way. And then of course you get the bonus like the um, the bike in the tube. So it's just about being productive while I'm out with the dog. It's not so bad on the uh, brightness because it's, um, it's fairly overcast and raining as it's been for a few days now, a few weeks even, all the way through summer even. We're going for a record apparently on the wettest August since records began. So let's hope we're equally going on a record for the driest, warmest winter we've ever had. Although actually warm winters mess things up because lots and lots of bugs come out of winter that would otherwise have perished so and then they eat all your plants and crops and things so you can't have it always anyway, this at the top of this hill is where I did my last sun, sun of 2019 and first sun, sunrise of uh, 2020 up here and I'll just show you the stunning view of the North York Moors. There it is in the background shrouded in, it's not, well it is mist, mist and rain you just can't get Rosebury Toppings over to our left behind all these trees. You just can't see Rosebury Topping. It's about two miles away. It's starting to, that, that rain is starting to pelt in now. Get a blob hitting the lens any minute because it's coming from that direction. The wind noise will probably be spectacular as well. Anyway, we're going off up here. So that is harvesting the hedgerow there's lots to be harvested it's just your time of course time and effort but I'm out anyway so I've got a dog if you've got a dog you've got to get out and if you're out you might as well do a little bit of harvesting while you're out As you can tell, not many people come up here, although it is very, very close to lots and lots of houses. Right, well we've gone a little beyond the hedgerows now and we're in a evergreen wood. Well, mostly evergreen. We're just sort of doubling back on ourselves via this wood. And there's another thing I haven't mentioned because there's not many out at this time of year, but with all this dampness there soon will be. And that is... Fungus. I have absolutely no idea what these are. And the state they're in... I won't even be trying to find out because old mushrooms can be deceptive. The colours can change. They can you lose uh, the, the 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 shape to some extent. These have been ravaged by slugs, by the looks of it. But anyway, with all this dampness, I am expecting a good fungus crop this year so we're just carrying on up here and this wood gets cleaned by volunteers on a regular basis so don't be disturbed if I show you piles of litter they get dropped but they do eventually get cleaned up by me and others mostly others but me and the dog do our bit One thing you cannot get an impression of 
and I know many YouTubers have mentioned it, I'm going up quite a serious slope now. But you get no idea of the angle of the slope. If I put the camera level, if I had a spirit level I could prove it, but that's about level. And that's where we're going up that hill. So I'll start getting out of breath. In fact I can see some litter from here. There's a bit there, look. And what there is. Some sort of concertina type bottle. <laughs> Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Where all this stuff comes from. I'm not on litter detail today. When I am on litter detail, I'll pick it up. I've got nowhere to put it at the moment unless I find a big poly bag. I've got little poly bags in my pocket, but not big ones. See, the kids have had a fire up here. It's the sort of thing kids do, so don't get excited. Hopefully they'll grow out of it. A few sweet wrappers. Won't take much to tidy that up. Bit of charcoal. Although it looks like they've had a fire that's got out of hand, doesn't it? Still all this wet will put paper to that now, so... Oh, we've got a lot more rubbish up here. We'll have to come back in the next day or two. Somebody's lunchbox there, look. Smashed up, side smashed in. That could be the leaf of the burdock. You can eat the root of the burdock or something in the bushes there. Oh, it's a bag. It's a bag. All right, we'll, we'll come back later and uh, Do what we can. There'll be a lot more rubbish up here yet. I do come this way quite often, so I know how much rubbish there is up here. We take away a little at a time. A lot of cans down there. The state of them trees. Oh there's a bag. We could get a we could get a bag of rubbish. Check one bag out with us at least. At least they leave us a bag, don't they? So we'll take one bag out with us. Look at this. It's like one of them raves, isn't it? Look at the trees. This is destruction on an unsustainable rate because these trees, I know the resin is very protective but if they keep burning the resin then the trees can't keep producing it forever. So we'll get a bit of this picked up. Look at this glass down here. Look. That's why I took a first aid kit with me. Because of the glass and the dog's feet. Right, we'll get a bag of rubbish.
I didn't come prepared with gloves, but look at that. A pair of gloves. <laughs> I don't need them. Brought their own toilet paper with them up. These are the ties for the tents, but I've I've put a lot of uh, burnt tent pegs in there, so uh, burnt tent poles in there. There's another tent peg. I found a few tent pegs. There's another one under there. So they didn't take the tent back with them, did they? I've also found one pound sixteen pence. So. I'll keep these tent pegs as well. So you never go home empty handed. But I'm going to have to get back because it'll be tea time soon. And there'll always, always be plenty of rubbish. Alright, you carry that one. You take that. You carry that. Fetch it. Fetch it. There'll be more rubbish up here. Anyway, we're on our way back now. But you've been in a short while. It's more brambles, but now we're... Uh, we don't want to do brambling and litter picking at the same time. to reach us but it's raining now you can see it blowing round that hill it's actually coming from that direction but you can see as it gets to the hill Waves of rain blow around it. So I'm going to put this phone away now before the main lot arrives and get my jacket zipped up and we'll get back to the bottom of the hill where there is a rubbish dump. Rosebury top in there. The dog has still not yet visited Rosebury Topping and it's only less than two miles away as the crow flies and then away in the mist you've got Captain Cook's monument. All right we've been pelted now, we've been properly pelted now so I'm going to put this phone away. Yes we've been pelted aren't we? Look at it. 